Hi, everyone. Hey, it's uh, Dr. Naomi Wolf, and I'm really honored and excited to be interviewing someone I know quite well, the <laughs> inevitable uh, analyst and strategist and warrior, um, my personal favorite human being. Um, I know, of course, in addition to my children, and that's my husband, Brian O'Shea. Welcome, Brian. Hi, thanks for having me. My pleasure. And likewise on all of the above. <laughs> Thank you, darling. So um, some of you who know the story of how I met Brian know that I, I met him when I was um, unfortunately getting death threats in 2014. And Brian is uh, from the world of intelligence, military intelligence, um, professional intelligence analyst, uh, intelligence community, and also private intelligence subsequently. And he was referred to me um, when I felt my life was in danger and he made my stalkers go away. Um, and ever since then, uh, I, you know, both personally and professionally, every day I learn more and more from Brian. He's one of the great researchers in the world, in my view and also an extraordinary strategist and someone who understands history and geopolitics um, in a way that I think is unparalleled. And I really would never have been able to piece together the sense of the world that I brought to readers in the, in, um, uh, the bodies of others if Brian hadn't uh, shared his um, depth of knowledge about geopolitics with me. Um, and on that note, um, Brian, if you could say a little bit more about your background, and then let's go into the omnibus bill. I know you've been looking at it. So um, is there anything that I've le left out that you'd like to say about, about your background in intelligence and how you came to be um, such a, a kind of a deep analyst? Sure, um, and thanks thanks for having me. Um, important time, this omnibus bill, they're trying to ram through. It could literally, uh, I'll talk about that in a second. About me, uh, I got, um, I joined the military in 1992. I couldn't wait uh, to get out of my small town because I'd read too many Tom Clancy novels, so I wanted to go be a spy. Uh, instead, I ended up uh, going to Defense Language Institute, did an 11-year career in the military, in Military Intelligence Corps, and worked primarily with 5th and 1st Special Forces, which exposed me to MENA or Middle East, North Africa, as well as um, Southeast Asia for targets. That was when I was with 1st uh, Group based out of uh, Washington State. Um, and then after that, it was uh, after being uh, held over for 11 months, like a lot of people were. I served in mainly in the Southern Philippines during Enduring Freedom, helping establish uh, intelligence networks, collecting intelligence to protect the teams, and then uh, the Green Beret teams. And so when I got out in 2003, it was buyer's choice. I mean, I had the, the highest clearance. I speak Arabic. And I went to Washington, D.C. area and was hired almost immediately up in the Fort Meade, Maryland area, followed by another few years, uh, almost a decade down in the um, Northern Virginia area with a different agency. And after that, I moved into private competitive intelligence where I was working for pharmaceutical firms, um, you name it, uh, heavy industry, learning what their competitors were doing which exposed me to a lot of international markets. I actually did more travel with that job than I ever did with the government, all over China, all over India, South America, you name it. And then um, took everything I'd learned and I put it into my own firm and my own offerings. And that's what I do today. Thank you so much. And thank you for your service. Um, well, let's get right to it, Brian. You have been looking deeply into the omnibus bill and a lot of people are including me, are concerned about it, but also intimidated by it because it's 4,000 pages long. And it was the draft bill was brought to legislators with only a few days to go uh, before a vote. So what have you found in it that's concerning? I know there have been a few tweets from legislators highlighting some of the problematic um, issues they're finding in the omnibus bill. What are, what are you finding? What are your concerns? Sure. And let me uh, just let you know, I'll be, if you see me typing, it's because I have two screens up. So I'll be referring to one and I'll post all these or hand you all these links after we present here. Well, um, right away, it, you know, and I, I would have loved to have looked at this earlier, but it was just released, I believe yesterday. And they're trying to cram it through by, um, you know, by the end of the week before Christmas. Mm -hmm. And just real quick, brief summary with the omnibuses, it, 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 
it ignores all of those committees and everything, crams everything for 2023 spending into one bill. So why is this important? This will essentially take the gavel away from Congress. We have a newly elected GOP uh, controlled Congress. And if this bill goes through, as everyone knows, Congress controls the budget. Well, if this stuff is approved um, it going into 2023, they have no leverage. The uh, people in control of Congress have no leverage. Uh, and the the bills in this are, are I mean, even for this uh, regime in charge, I was a little shocked. I was very shocked when I saw what was crammed into here. And I'm just calling it, and really what kind of um, alerted me that it was even there um, was there was a, and I'm going to get to it really quickly. Um, there's a congressman uh, who started just going through it, had his team go through it. And uh, it's very difficult to get through because there's no links to subsequent bills or acts that they keep mm-hmm. referring. So, for example, wow. it could say, hey, we're going to do something bad to you in accordance with the Do Something Bad to You Act of 1992 with changes found in the Something Something Act. Mm-hmm. So you actually have to go through and there's probably 11 references on each of these 4,000 pages. Wow. So uh, I just really started looking at it a few hours ago. And, um, you know, the way I get through it really quickly, actually, let me explain that at the end. Let me let me get to the meat, meat okay. of the matter here first. And I'm, I'm putting this stuff on Getter and also on Twitter as I do it. And so, um, yeah, last night, uh, and I'll, I'll get you his name by the end of this, but um, one of the congressmen, you know, to his credit, had his team up all night going through this, and they started pointing out shocking, shocking, shocking numbers um, of what was being spent on. Mm-hmm. And this is beyond, uh, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of pork, as they say in there. But for me, this goes beyond that. So let me get right to what I found and then come back to what he found. Uh, the first thing I wanted to look at was why Alaska is mentioned 104 times. Wow. 4,000 uh, pages. And, and, you know, there's a lot of stuff that I kind of blew through. But one thing I did catch, and this was in the other CARES acts, mm-hmm. was this correlation between Alaska tribal lands and Hawaiian native lands hmm. for agricultural purposes and research. And so when, when I saw that, I was like, well, that's not good. And again, I'll, I'll write up a better summary of it. But in a nutshell, what they're talking about is all this money will go into Alaska insular areas and um, Hawaiian insular areas for the purpose of agricultural research, but specifically on these native lands. Hmm. Now, this is it has nothing to do with native or American this has to do with what exists uh, on one of the largest Native American lands in uh, Alaska, which seems to drive like the research and everything. And we are talking, I think, over a billion dollars going into this, mm-hmm. not counting the other money that's already gone there. There's a organization, it's a consolidation of Native American businesses called Siri. Um, I don't have the acronym in front of me, so I can't spit out what that means. But Siri is basically all of the businesses that fall under uh, the tribal uh, federation in Alaska. A lot of these are concrete and and agricultural, pretty much everything. It's very big. Well, if if anyone follows George Soros, there's a uh, for-profit organization called Arabella Advisors. Anyone who's been in DC, like we both have, is probably very familiar with Arabella Advisors. Arabella Advisors is essentially an extension mm-hmm. of George Soros's Open Societies, um, you know, monopoly of, of nonprofits and, and B Corps. And they tend to s- take control of organizations to uh, turn litigation or, or to turn uh, regulations and bills and laws to favor them and to favor mm-hmm. their clients. Mm-hmm. Well, Siri, which controls all of the businesses, or most of the businesses in Alaska was recently, I'd say in the last year, year and a half, um, they voted as their chair, someone named, um, I think it's Cindy Mueller, mm-hmm. E-L-L-E-R. That's great. She's, you know, native Alaskan and um, that's fantastic. 
The only problem was her last job before she got that chair position mm -hmm. was a senior account manager at Arabella Advisors. Oh, so, wow. <laughs> yeah. So for like four years, five years. So the bottom line, just to jump in, honey, sorry, is that basically Soros money is directing the flow of some of this uh, a substantial amount of this on the bus bill through a colleague or protege of his. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Because who's going to control those programs? It says it in the bill. It's, it doesn't say Siri, but it is the mm -hmm. native Alaskan wow. organizations. They also use a lot of language, as you know, they always do. That's very ambiguous for approved organization. Right. Public partner private. Right, uh, right, right, right. Who are those people? Basically, yeah. when I see public partner private, uh, public private partnership, the first thing that pops into my head is we're going to get screwed. Right. Um, that's always bad. So, if right. I see that, so, 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 uh, so, uh, jump in. so basically Soros is essentially instrumentalizing Native American lands in order to create a kind of mafia type stranglehold over ta our tax dollars and outcomes. Is that? That's what it feels like. And again, I've, I've, I've only glanced at it. I have gone into Arabella and Siri in the past mm -hmm. uh, for a client. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where I discovered that information. Uh, which yeah. I, I you, you said that, I'm sorry to interrupt. You said that Arabella is behind so much nefarious activity that oh you found even prior to this. Well, what are some other things you found? So there's a lot uh, in there. A uh, lot about salmon, which I found really strange. And a lot about food. So talk about that, because um, by coincidence, uh, or maybe this is all coming to, uh, to the fore in different mm -hmm. ways, today I was on a podcast with Pastor Dave who, mm. of uh, His Glory Ministries, and he's got, I guess, millions of viewers, and he said that he had just had two farmers on his podcast who both said that veterinarians from the government had come to them. This had never happened before. It basically said they would take their land uh, or make it impossible for them to, to farm and grow livestock if they didn't um, uh, do certain medical interventions to their livestock. And again, that had never, ever happened. And you keep finding um, themes around veterinarians, animals, uh, uh, yeah. w returning um, acreage, making it uh, unavailable to owners, kind of reappropriating it in many of the nonprofits and kind of multinational uh, entities that, that you've looked at that are kind of part of this kind of globalist agenda to dissolve sovereignty. And um, so are you finding anything specifically that relates to our food supply? Yeah. Um, <laughs> animals? I'm glad you brought that up. Um, this entire thing is an FDA program. Um, and there is some language. Let me see if I can find it. This entire omnibus bill is an FDA program. No, the um, the Alaska part of it. Oh, um, I see. A lot more FDA stuff in there, but um, this is yeah. Here we go. Uh, that more than that, not more than two percent of the funding provided in section blah 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 of the Consolidated Farm and Rural Development Act may be used by the state of Alaska for training technical assistance programs, but not more than two percent of the funding provided. Um, Okay, so they're talking about um, the, you know, the way the funding goes. But, you know, going back to this, it's, um, yeah, here we go. There's, yeah, so a lot of this that I'm catching is research. And the funding research. The omnibus bill is funding research. Funding yeah. research. But the research is never just research. It's about training personnel, and it's about training more people. Um and specifically, specifically for food-related items, uh, there is also some language in there. And uh, I wish I had another screen, otherwise this stuff would be up and ready. Um, but there's other language in there about uh, appropriating like 500,000 acres in Alaska as well for Whoa. ecological research preservation. Oh, and that's another thing too, and I have to dive into it. There is a ton of stuff about Alaska and the safer seas or something like that having to do with the environment. Mm -hmm. But what was funny about that is uh, what's also included is Alaska. And then it says, and Oklahoma. Now I'm no geography major, but I, I don't know of any oceans that are anywhere near Oklahoma. 
you know, so, not only so big, big picture, because you're you're incredibly good at, at the granular stuff, but we also want to know kind of what it means. Um, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. No, you got it. Go ahead. Yeah. So are you basically saying that you're seeing the same themes in the omnibus bill that you've seen in many other, you know, bills, agreements, um, regulations in which sovereignty basically that would have belonged to the state or would have belonged to individual owners is kind of being handed over to these opaque nonprofits. Or it also sounds like the bill is doing the same thing that we saw with the CARES Act that you pointed out to me and mm -hmm. um, the Trusted Messenger Program of using government money to kind of train and enlist an army of functionaries to do the bidding of the government in new ways. Is, is that what you're saying? Kind of. So the way it works with these larger, uh, so there's two types of tribes. There's, you know, I forgot the other thing. It's like administrative tribes, but then there's treaty tribes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So a treaty tribe, that means a treaty has been ratified with Congress. Those tend to be the more powerful leading tribes. And I, I worked for a large tribe for um, a large nation, actually, for a couple of years, uh, several years, wonderful, wonderful experience. But what I did notice working there is like around election time, when you see the mailers go out for how to vote, mm -hmm. there's only Democratic candidates. Interesting. Out. Yeah. Um, now, traditionally, Native American uh, tribes tend to lean more to the left. And it's fine. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's their choice. But what I'm noticing is that there's, there's very, very constricted streams of information. There's also a really, really robust and strong um, societal type of pressure in a lot of these communities, even on the large tribes. So I, I don't know, but I do know if you vote the wrong way in a lot of things and you're an enrolled member of a tribe, if you go against the grain, so to speak, it, makes, it does make life very, very difficult for you. Um, so going back to the omnibus bill, can you help me understand? I'm a little confused about what you're saying in identifying all of this research money and also identifying that um, so much of it is training and, and agriculture related. What's the bottom line? What's wrong with that? Uh, so the bottom line is um, who's controlling it. So from the way I, from the way I read and the way I read in the others, CARES Acts is, you know, it's kind of like Arabella's controlling it. Oh, it's, you see what oh, I mean? Oh, So basically this gigantic bill, yeah. which is, all of the money for next year for this giant country of ours has mm -hmm. kind of been handed over to the deployment and also to, to pay off to the deployment of Arabella, which mm -hmm. is in the hands of basically Soros, which you've said yes. earlier and, and other kind of liberal globalists. Right. right. Um, and, and that will not be transparent to people. And then it also involves training people all the way down the line right. and, and with a focus on agriculture, the way in the pandemic, the focus of all these bought off functionaries via the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation was on medicine and medical interventions and medical mandates. Is that what you're saying? Kind of, but it's, it's almost like Arabella by proxy. So it's legitimately going to, they don't really specify who it goes to in the bill, um, but it's native, it's native lands. And so the way, and it's different in every area. So there is no hard and fast rule for how different areas of the countries, tribes and nations of Native Americans uh, roll. But the in this particular case, if you really, really like having been a contractor, OK, when I was a contractor, if someone from, let's say, the Pentagon retired, all of our defense contracting companies would rush to scoop that person up because they're going to have influence over the government. It's impossible for them not to. So in this case here. Mm -hmm. What does yeah. that have to do with this? So this is almost the same thing where Arabella almost seems to cultivate people. They pull them out of these areas. They cultivate them. They become mm -hmm. Arabella people. Oh. And they send them back in. Oh, I gotcha. Like the World Economic Forum. Very, very cultivated people, trained them, and then sent them back in to lead nations. Is that what you're saying? That is exactly what I'm saying. And the problem with that is 
it's not technically illegal. I mean, in my opinion, there should be a, a cooling off period for such yeah. appointments. Um, but again, that's sovereign decision. There's nothing. Yeah. Right. The you, other can oh. I jump in with a clarifying yeah. question? Thank sure. you. You've shown me a lot of nefarious things about Arabella. Um, you've only mentioned, you know, one just now that their ties to Soros. What are some of the other bad things you found out about Arabella and how, how wide its reach is? Well, I mean, that's that's a whole nother conversation. It's it's reach is so wide that um, everything from some of the chef programs you see where they're training inmate chefs, you'll see these a lot of these things are used, I believe, for to, to enter our communities. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, if you look at the door knocking program, right, and that was supposed to be COVID tell you about the vaccines and your health choices. Well, all of them, jumping in under the Biden administration, just to clear. under the Biden administration, yeah. And so, almost all the companies that got those, or the not, are, you know, are are, are uh, polling companies for the Democratic Party. Wow. The nonprofits that got those, they all seem to s fall into that that Arabella, ultimately the Open Societies or Society, um, which is Soros's organization Soros's umbrella. Mm -hmm. And so. Here, their job is to knock on the door and tell grandma that, hey, the vaccine's safe, you know, uh, or take the vaccine. And, oh, by the way, you know, let me help you if you need any voting help or we can pick up your your, your ballot, too. Oh, and my so, God. By the power to pick up ballots, Brian? Well, I can't prove that right now. I'm working on it. But the point is, all of the companies are data, com data collection companies, wow. even though Saki said, oh, we're not going to collect data. They are data collection companies. Right, right. A lot of them say it. One company, and I'll, I'll mention it. Um, I won't mention the name right now, mm -hmm. but I'm working on a report. <laughs> One company is led by a counter, a former counter terrorist guy from the CIA. It says it on his profile. And another regiment guy from the UK working in our country. And Wait, is this a little, uh, a little tangled up working with what? In what we're they got, there's actual contracts to go do the door knocking or the uh, vaccine community outreach program. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. So going back to the omnibus bill, um, yeah. so your point is Arabella is mixed up, you know, definitely under the oversight of George Soros and his umbrella mm -hmm. organization, OSI, which I used to think was the best thing in the world, the Open Society Institute. And and so there, the, the bill allows funds for them to train functionaries up and down our system to do the bidding of Arabella. And, uh, and, and a lot of the focus is on native lands and on the agriculture, uh, the acreage in native lands. For is that, that the bottom line? For that part of the bill. I mean, that's that a very small part of the bill because it's a $1.7 trillion bill. But yes, wow. in that case, Aaron, it's not Arabella getting the money, just so we're clear. But if, every, if, if, if all of the leadership or the, the key leadership of the uh, tribal confederation who manages that money just came from Arabella, we're talking yeah. like within a year. Wow. I mean, that's... Those are close ties. And we've seen that, we've seen that, um, God, it, you know, this is all fitting together, Brian. I mean, you've talked before about how Ukraine is just a giant money laundering operation oh, yeah. and that's why there's so much bipartisan support to, to transfer so much American wealth to Ukraine where it's completely untraceable and people can get paid giant suitcases full of money. And, um, and, and also it can come back and bribe or people or fund, uh, uh, you know, partisan politics in the United States. That's pretty right. much what you sketched out to me. Mm -hmm. So now it seems like there, this is a similar kind of um, methodology that the U.S. Congress is basically handing the power of the purse to a third party, in this case, not Ukraine, but Soros, Arabella, and, and funneling all of our money through this third party um, and basically leaving the, the people's representatives and the government itself, really, right? Because these are nonprofits, these are third parties, these are Native American tribes, which are not nation, they're not part of the United States, right? They're, they're literally separate nations by law. So, for, the, for the most part, but they, I think the key thing to remember there is, like, they do pay, you know, contrary to a lot of, um, you know, 
contrary to the popular belief, Native Americans do pay federal taxes. Right. They just don't pay I, state I taxes. That. What I meant is just like when we were looking at, you know, the women going missing on Native American right. land yeah. and mm -hmm. how the FBI couldn't really or didn't really pay attention because it was a separate, it's a nation, right? It's Well, that was, I mean, if I may, I mean, that, that, sure. that issue there that, you know, I'm not really sure what was going on there. I don't know if the tribes weren't letting the FBI on. I'm not sure if the FBI was just not paying attention to it, but it brings up a really important point. In most large tribes like that, I don't know about the Alaskan tribes. I imagine it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. You cannot do a raid, for instance. So Right, right. Well, let me use another example. Um, mm -hmm. When I was looking into geoengineering in 2017, right. Bill Gates, always behind all of these awful things, um, was and these horrible people at, at Harvard were um, going to launch a... Uh, a geoengineering kind of experiment to, to, to dim the sun and mm -hmm. they were going to do it from Native American lands because there it was illegal to do it, you know, off of Native, Native American lands. So really all I'm trying to say is like Ukraine, you know, there's uh, uh, some barriers around oversight, you know, when, when money is flowing into tribal areas, right? You can't, it can't be tracked in the same way, exactly. right? Exactly. Okay. And, and, and let me just make clear that I'm not saying in any way that these tribes are, you know, complicit. Right. They, you know, um, historically, most tribes don't trust the government at all. And I don't blame them. Right. Um, but the when when people do reach out to them and they're really good salespeople, mm -hmm. um, it's not that they're naive. It's just that once they trust you as they trust me on, on a pretty large uh, nation, they're not going to check in on you. And, you know, you have to have a good moral compass, uh, you know, to not be tempted. And, you know, a lot of them look at um, Casino Jack there, you know, a lot of them will trust once you've earned that trust. And it's certainly, they're not, I mean, you don't want to cross them at all. But what happens is they do trust. And once you've earned that trust, they do trust you and they trust you to do the right thing by their people. And it just seems to me that they're being manipulated into this because at the end of the day, they're they're going to be left holding the bag. But Let's go. Is there anything else in the? One more thing. I just want to get back to. The, I'm sorry. Um, the I'm just I, I'm rolling on coffee because I just can't believe what's in this bill. Um, so the uh, the rating thing is very important. So what I was about to say about the rate is you in most tribes. What rate? The rate. Uh, the rates. The raids. Uh, so on Native American lands, the FBI can't do a raid uh -huh. unless they have permission from the tribal elders. Uh -huh. So you can see why a lot of businesses that may be up to no good would want to set up right. on tribal lands. Of course, right. they have to have approval, right. but um, that's that's a big thing. So they can't do a raid. They, you know, the they, FBI can't do a raid. The FBI cannot. Um, anyway, so that. That's why that's uh, that's something to be kept an eye on. So that's the land part. That one caught my eye first because mm -hmm. of Arabella. Right, um, right. Moving along. Mm -hmm. And by the way, the way I did that, I just opened up the 4,000-page doc, document. Uh, my advice to the audience, because I know it's a great audience. It's an active research audience. I, I, I'm on Getter. There's, I guess, so many great leads. Honey, we're on five platforms right now. We're live streaming on five platforms. Oh, that's fantastic. So yeah. the point is, pick your topic. Okay, pick your topic. It could be geoengineering, it could be anything. And just start control F um, on that. If you have a PC, I don't know the Mac command. So I just went control F Alaska. And wow. I just looked at every single one of those, those wow. results. Wow. And then just kind of screenshot them, the whole thing. So you remember where you were, because it can get away on you. So my next control F to find on the document was... Um, bio. <laughs> so with bio, I figured I'd get a lot. Um, not as much as I thought. Just one there that caught my attention. I've already bounced this over to, um, you know, someone in the industry. Uh, section 775, in this or any subsequent uh, fiscal year, uh, Secretary of Homeland Security shall transfer to the Secretary of Agriculture the operation of and all property required to operate the National Bio and Agro Defense Facility in Manhattan. Oh, 
in Manhattan? Kansas. In Kansas. Kansas. Uh That that really caught my eye because when I was doing a lot of Dajek research, Manhattan, Kansas came up all the time. There's some major research there. Sorry, honey. You you are definitely definitely on a roll with the coffee. Just no, I just have to jump in and clear and ask ask Mm -hmm. questions a couple of times. Um, When you say you shared it with someone in the industry, what industry? The intelligence industry? No, no, I'm sorry. In the um, eco health industry. Okay, gotcha. Um, Now, now, moving on, can you just identify most people know who Dajak is that you reference for people who don't? Who is he? Why does it matter? Let me try to make this really quick. So Peter Dajak is suspected to be essentially the NIH's bag man who was doing parallel contracts with the Chinese Communist Party and Wuhan Institute of Virology. So basically, NIH would fund EcoHealth Alliance. EcoHealth Alliance is working side by side with Wuhan Institute of Virology, which is part of the Chinese Academy of Sciences. That's like their NIH and infectious disease thing. Mm -hmm. And um, as a result, there was technology and research transfer which may have led to the release of a, what I believe is a man-made virus. Gotcha. Now and going I, back to the omnibus, thank you, sweetheart. Now going back to the omnibus bill, what's the, what's the relationship to Dajic that you were? Well, I just, I just did a, a search on bio because there's so much to go through. I just want right. to try to catch it all. So what came up first was a section 775 where it's something about uh, transferring um all property required to operate the National Bio and Agro Defense Facility in Manhattan, Kansas, provided. Such transfers shall include the transfer of up to 40 full-time equivalent positions uh, to be completed within 120 days, as jointly determined by the secretaries. Um, So why is that important? Um, Well, they're talking about transferring a homeland security function to the Secretary of Agriculture. This is more power going to HHS where ag falls underneath. Okay, so ag falls under HHS. HHS is also the umbrella for the NIH, NIAID. So really what it sounds like, maybe I'm being premature, is that we've cracked the code and people are waking up to the fact that all these powers that had belonged to the government were transferred in the last two years to to kind of medical functionaries and and CDC and FDA. And so now they're moving on to plan B, or maybe it was always plan B, of transferring government functions, DHS functions, congressional functions to third parties under the cover of agriculture and environmental protection. Is that the bottom line? Yeah, it's almost like I would I would even call it a uh, public health coup. Um, if you've ever seen Demolition Man, that kind of dystopian 1994 Sylvester Stallone movie, public health, like the HHS, was running the world. Right. But uh, this sounds like they're moving on to agriculture and, and kind of green policies uh, being a pretext for running the world. Well, I, I don't even know if it's a pretext. I mean, all of your vaccines are tested in animals. Food supply is animals. They've been going after that. You mentioned earlier that they want to put, you know, things in our food supply. So I mean, jumping in, sweetheart, if you don't mind, Pastor Dave said that they've already started mRNA injecting livestock in New Zealand. And that is clearly the next step for livestock in America. And I've been very worried what this is going to do to our food supply, because, you know, as I've been reporting, these mRNA injections are damaging the fertility of babies in utero. So we don't even know if the next generation, even if they're not vaccinated, are going to be fertile. So, you know, most of the animals we eat are mammals. If they're doing the same thing to cows and sheep and goats, we don't know if there's going to be a second or third generation of cows or sheep or goats who can reproduce themselves. So it, it almost sounds like we're engineering shortages and, and bottlenecks in our food supply. Or they can reproduce loaded up with whatever vaccine they want to get in our systems. Right. You know, and, that's, and just so you know, in Manhattan, Kansas, is I did find a document that I'll, I'll post called the Action Plan National Program 103 Animal Health 2022 to 2027 oh. Agricultural Research Services. I'll just quickly go through the, the lead titles in the, you know, I haven't even read through this. It's 50 pages. Uh, component one, biodefense. 
uh, component to antimicrobial resistance, endemic bacterial diseases, endemic viral diseases, parasitic diseases. These are all the tests and experiments they're doing at this place. They, oh, they, I also put out a tweet about a year ago that it looked like they were doing gain of function at this place as well. Uh, endemic viral diseases. Uh, I said that one transmissible. Sorry to jump in, but rather than going through all the headlines, if you don't mind, what's the point you're taking away from this document? Well, the point I'm taking away from this document, it looks like um, they're consolidating. Um, they're, they're giving ownership of this. This that appears to be kind of a dangerous lab over to Department of Ag and taking it away from Homeland Security, which means that if that's the case, then BARDA may end up falling under HHS. You never know. Um, and that is the biological, I forgot the, what that stands for, but too many acronyms, but we all know who, anyone who follows us knows who BARDA is. So just like um, a man-made virus escaped and and ruined, you know, and then w followed by the necessity for a, you know, China made vaccine that is ruining everyone's physical health. It sounds like this setup is is a very good pretext for something to escape into the food supply or some sort of environmental crisis that allows them to say, oh, we need to take ownership, you know, of everyone of the food supply come to the cities, we'll feed you, you know, leave your sure. farmland and um, in a, a kind of an intervention controlling humans based on the food supply and agriculture. Is that pretty much what you're saying? Yeah. And, you know, let me and exactly what I'm saying is part of a bigger thing I'm saying. But let me just give you the hypothesis title here. Right. You know, HHS taking over, taking all authority. Let's say that's my hypothesis. That is, yeah, yeah. And they did it with medicine and now they're doing it with agriculture. Okay, so Look at all the components, because there's more. Um, food, okay, and anyone that studies warfare, what's warfare already? Always about land, resources, um, like food and water, land resources, and defense, okay? Best defense is to win the world, but that's a whole other topic called One Health we could talk about another time. So here you have, you know, and by the way, that other program that I mentioned in Alaska, about food was uh, that's department of uh, that's the uh, U.S. Department of Agriculture. This is the U.S. Department of Agriculture. They wow. both fall under HHS. Wow. Um, so now you have a biodefense research capability going to HHS. Mm -hmm. Which look, I get it. You got to they'll they'll make the argument. Oh, we've got all the scientists. We'll work right. with them. But right. um, defense should be the the military's job. You know, right. they, they can contract that out and bring it back in so they can control right. it. Right. Um, so there's that one. So that's. So it's, it is a coup using ag as a pretext. Instead using of ag, using yeah. gun control falls under HHS. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Using, um, you know, like, oh, like the uh, opioid crisis. Right. I mean, fentanyl is made by, by Pfizer um, and, and the, the ingredients come from China. Wow. Yeah, no, fentanyl is a prescribed drug. It's just. All right, so, so are you seeing, so is there, we're, we're running out of time, sweetheart. Are there any other major okay. headlines? So there's, or, your, let me get to the, oh, those major ones. Okay. Um, there's another one I posted. I don't know much about this. This is more in the political space, but it's called, it's 14 pages called uh, Modifications to the Presidential Transition Act. Now, you all recall when Biden was trying to elbow his way into the White House in November while they were still, you know, working out who, you know, the election results. Um, so just keep an eye on that one. That's in my getter. I don't I don't really know much about presidential transition. So I just farm but, that out, too. But as a citizen, I've got to know, like we, you know, for for 200 plus years, we haven't had a problem with presidential transition. So why mess with it? I know. Right. The act is from 1963. Right. And it's well, 14 pages. I started going through it. I didn't, I couldn't really, I had my mind on food. So yeah. Well, darling, we're, we're running out of time. If there are additional. This one's big. Yeah. This yeah. One's big. Sorry. Okay. To All off. right. Well, should we do another episode and you can no, go, this needs to go, out right. yep. go, as, go and as much as we can do this bill, it could end up going through tomorrow. Right. Um, All right. So we're all watching the border. We're all watching what's happening. Right. Okay. So on page 1052, um, and this is all under HHS. Um, 
let me see, the secretary, meaning the secretary general of HHS, uh, is authorized in consultation with the secretary of state through grant or cooperative agreement to make available to public and or nonprofit private institutions or agencies, private being the key word there, in participating foreign countries, funds to acquire, lease, alter, or renovate facilities in those countries as necessary to conduct programs of assistance for international health activities. This, ah. is, this is a billion dollar price tag here. Oh, um, now, the key words you always want to look for is they say HIV AIDS, and then they say, and other infectious diseases, chronic and environmental diseases, and other health activities broad, other health activities. That could be anything. Okay. Uh, really quick, so I could, that wasn't the one I meant to get out. I'll get that out. Um, Let me jump in there. Um, you know, other health activities, you and I have been noticing a drumbeat of um, kind of expanding the definition of mental illness. Mm, and, yeah. and bureaucratizing the management of the mentally ill. Like if you have anxiety, it's a mental illness. If you have depression, it's a mental illness. If you are going against the views of your community, as in Canada, it's a mental illness. Yeah. Um, and yeah. yeah, I mean, being a dissident could be a mental illness. And then exactly. here the international... Unhinged. Um, Sorry, unhinged. Unhinged exactly. conspiracy theories, yes. You're right, unhinged. That word came out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. And suddenly it was everywhere. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Or all those bots saying, is Naomi okay? <laughs> you know, the, the characterizing of dissidents and critics as, as mentally ill, it's already begun. Well, think about it. If like, And what do you prescribe for most mental illnesses these days? Opioids. Right. Where are most opioids made? China. China. Yeah. Okay. Um, Who makes most of them? The same people making the vaccines. You right. create a problem to fix a problem. Oh my goodness. And and that's why do you in my opinion, that's why the borders are wide open. Yeah, it's gonna try to turn some states purple, but there's no control over that. That to me is more about flooding this country with new diseases, flooding okay. this country with opioids for sure. We've seen that spike since the borders. Yeah. Open. We saw it drop to nothing when the border was closed and Wuhan was closed, by the way. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, so, true. but this is the most haunting one, and I'll stop at this one. I really want to get this out because we're all parents. A lot of us are. We've all been watching the border. This is what I was. Um, We've got about five minutes left. Got it. Um, but let me just pull it up. Yeah, this is this this is going to haunt me tonight. So, um, Section 230 on page 10, um, 1063. This is with regard to unaccompanied children coming through the border. Mm -hmm. The Department of Health and Human Services may accept donations from the private sector. Non They're buying the kids. They're buying the kids. Non-governmental organizations and other groups independent of the federal government for the care of unaccompanied the Holy cow. They're <laughs> buying the kids. They're trafficking the kids. Yep. In the care of the Office of Refugee Resettlement and Administration for Children and Families, that's oh. including medical goods and services, which may include early childhood development. When they say which may include, that means it's not going to include, but they're opening up a broad umbrella, of, you know, but, uh, the, you know, and, and any other items, keyword other items, and just control F, other. You'll get a lot of them, but items intended to promote the well-being of such children. And there is no definition for no the definition. Thing. So what does this mean practically? How does it translate that I could I could go to the border and say, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've got $500 in donations and I will take this child and look after him or her. Is that the bottom line without government oversight? And this one I caught right before the broadcast. Is that correct, Brian? Is that what you're saying? It looks to me like anyone can basically buy their way onto the roster of NGOs that Wait, get because... to scoop up these children. Oh, my God. And it doesn't specify that they have to be national. They could be international. So they, they can get these kids out of the country and just turn them into... Donations from the private yeah. sector non-government organizations, which are NGOs or, or nonprofits, and other groups independent, other groups independent I mean, of the federal government. With pimps and traffickers. That's what it looks like to me. And, or even, you know, experimenting on children, pimps, traffickers. And I said that when I put that out on, on Getter tonight and on Twitter, I said, 
this this is dangerous. I oh mean, oh my god! The fact that it's dangerous is like it's dangerous enough to have NGOs and 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 private sector. At least you might have some established businesses. Right, it right. could be fake still, but right. when you open it up to um, and other groups independent of the federal government, we're another group yeah. independent it's, of the federal government. That guy right. on the street is one. Totally. The Ku Klux Klan, the you know man love man boy love group. The it, like. Anyone is a group independent of the federal government. That it's and, and keep an, you know, for all the investigators out there, keep an eye on Catholic charities because they are right at the forefront of this. They are buying up like warehouses and stuff down there. Catholic charities is not good. Okay. And, and I'm Catholic, Catholic, so I can say that. Okay. But they're oh, not. Right. Well, that's not, a huge okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, sorry. I was, I was it just pisses just me off. As it should. That mm -hmm. is horrific. So basically, thank you so much, Brian O'Shea. Just to sum up, you found a gigantic um, transfer of our tax dollar wealth to a Soros-aligned nonprofit named Arabella. It's flowing through Native American lands. I just to be clear to find that it's going to a, a tribal entity that is most likely heavily influenced by Arabella. There we go. Um, we have seen basically a massive transfer of authority from DHS to HHS and money going to facilities in this country and around the world. You know, did you read my getter tweet? Because I said, Brian O'Shea will be analyzing the uh, omnibus bill. And if you're lucky, he will show you Loki. Oh, I'm sorry. This is, I didn't mean to, it's a serious topic. He just keeps pawing at me, so. No, you have to hold Loki. You have to show, you might as well show people, I mean, what you said is so depressing. You might as well show people our adorable puppy. This is Loki. Oh my gosh. Yeah, we've got to have some hope and joy in this world because what you've shared with us is very, very dark indeed. We need the puppies and we need the the, the good things we can find along the way. Um, and you've also said they're setting up um, basically healthcare facilities internationally to define healthcare any way they want. Yep. And massive amounts of money are going toward them, which is as scary to me as the Chinese run police stations that are being set up around the world, right? This internationalizing of facilities. You know? I want to point out something yes. really important. Developing countries includes China. Oh. They're defined as a developing country. At the UN, at the WHO, at the WTO. Very important. And lastly, the fourth thing you've pointed out and identified is um, this absolutely terrifying uh, free for all of come buy a kid, basically. Come pay your money, get your donations, like? appropriate a child, appropriate a bunch of children, take them with you. No one knows where they went, no one looks after them, they could disappear. Um, this is huge public service, Brian. Thank you so much for your hard work. Right. I know there will be more. Um, if people have comments and questions, put them on the getter, put them on the Twitter, put them on the um, all the all the platforms where we're uh, posting and streaming this live stream. And, you know, thank you so much, Brian O'Shea. Where can people find you? Oh, thank you. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Brian, B-R-I-A-N O'Shea, O-S-H-E-A S. PI, which is Stryker Pierce Investigation. So at Brian O'Shea, SPI. And on Getter, I am at Brian O'Shea, B R I A N O S H E A. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll be posting this stuff throughout the night and into tomorrow. So if you have any questions, DM me or publicly post, I'll get back to you. Okay. Thank you so much for your service. And as you always say, and your service now to everyone, and as you always say, investigate everything, right? That's your motto. Investigate model. everything. Don't stop. Ever. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. They, I mean, heavy stuff, but we can handle it as a nation somehow. I guess next steps is what do we do? But we'll address that in our next uh, live stream. Thank you so much, Thanks, Brian, for joining us. Thanks for having me. All right. Bye. See you. See you in the living room. <laughs> hey, everyone. It's Naomi Wolf of Daily Clout, and I am asking you to please, uh, if you like the video you just saw, uh, support us become a member, donate. Um, you can send checks to P.O. Box 24, Millerton, New York, 12546, or go to Daily Clout, D-A-I-L-Y-C-L-O-U-T, become a member or donate. Thank you so much for your support. Every penny goes for paying our hardworking staff 
paying hosting costs and paying our lawyers um, who have been uh, leading the fight to keep you safe and free to keep the Constitution safe and to keep you free. Thank you so much.